Good evening, brethren. The Lodge of Light number 413 presents to you a webinar on making cocktails. My name is Brother Shashi Lewis and today we have a very special guest with us from Maverick and Pharma who is also a fellow Mason. Brother Sri Ram. Brother Sri Ram, please welcome Brother Sri Ram. Namaste. Namaste. I'm really liking your lockdown look. The bush is seeming to grow quite long and entering a mother into the topic. Well, it's all about human resources, scarce, scarce resources. I shall explain it later. Okay. Anyway, Brother Sri Ram uh, is from American uh, Pharma. Hi, everybody. Uh, he's going to talk to us about cold brew coffee. He's going to tell us much more about what many of us know. So it's off to Sri Ram. Sri Ram, please explain what cold brew coffee is all about. That's good? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, brethren, hi, I'm from uh, Lord Southern Brotherhood and I run this brand called Maverick and Farmer Coffee. Um, I'm going to take you all through something uh, which I truly enjoy as a drink. It's a cold brew. Um, so, first thing I'm going to just explain how to make a cold brew drink. Um, it's about taking one cup of any medium grind coffee that you have at home, take one cup of that and add four parts of water to that. So, that you have to keep it in a nice, uh, good bottle or a jar uh, and keep that for 12 to 14 hours in the fridge and what you get after that is a nice good cold brew concentrate that you can use for the different kinds of drinks that you can make I'm going to showcase four drinks here today but the more exciting part is going to be the alcoholic drink so I'm going to call Shashi back to do his first drink Thank you Shira. thanks yeah. Okay, brethren, uh, the idea was to make cocktails and to keep it really simple. You know, try and find ingredients that you would regularly find at home. Not really go out and stretch yourself to go and find ingredients, some exotic stuff, whatever. And really actually get things off the shelf that you can actually reach out to. Most important ingredient for the next drink that I have is a vodka. You can have any vodka. And just to make it specific, none of the brands that you see here have actually paid us to showcase them. This is all just what we've bought. Okay, now going forward, uh, it, this is going to be a vodka based uh, cocktail and it's a very common cocktail, something which really appeals to the Indian palate. Because, you know, going, going forward, if you actually have a look at it, all our curries are very complex in their flavors. This drink actually will remind you of a curry and all the complexities of a curry and the hit, the heat, the hit, everything very Indian. Actually, about 20 years ago when I tasted this cocktail for the first time, that's what I thought. I said, somebody's given me a curry to drink along with vodka. So to start off with, we take a glass, a white rim glass. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because I'm going to make a cocktail and make a snack to go with it. A healthier snack. I wouldn't say the healthiest snack, but a healthy snack to go uh, with it. So we take a white rim glass like this and we need to rim the glass. So what I have with me is a little salt. And like any uh, amount of Indian heat that you would need, you would probably uh, take a little bit of uh, chili powder along with it. And uh, no, no, Shashi, on that one, it look quite spicy. Then. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, you know, give this a little mix. So what we actually need over here is uh, a line to just line the glass. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line line this with a little bit of lime juice. That so it stays like a good amount of old world bar snacks that you usually get. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, most definitely. So knock the excess salt off. Come back with some ice. And to start off with, so what, what we do is we, well, you take your vodka, if you want to, you could measure it out or you could just eye it. I personally prefer to eye it because it's your comfort, you drink as much as you would like and what suits you. So actually I'm not going to use this. So you just eye it here. Yeah. You got some vodka onto your rice. Well, that's, that's all I have left during this lockdown. Tomato juice. I couldn't buy any, so I actually made it. So this is your tomato juice. This is your base for your cocktail. So you get your tomato, tomato juice to go in. 
You want tell us how to make a good tomato juice? Nothing, just take some tomatoes, cut them up, put them in a mixer, put a little water, stir it up. How many tomatoes typically? Do you have? This this is probably around uh, three tomatoes. Three tomatoes. Three, uh, three three medium sized tomatoes. Yeah. What you also need now is some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce actually gives you the flavor that comes through here. So you add as much as you need. So not really too much. So you just add what you need. The other thing, the heat actually now comes from a hot sauce that you use. Traditionally, they've been using Tabasco. Tabasco makes a few variants of the hot sauce. I do have a Tabasco, but I said now this is going to be a bloody merry burn in hell. So I said nothing better to then look at our very own hot chili good jalokia. So this is a hot sauce. It's not really very very hot, but you know. You know, Sajay, once at an exhibition, I tasted a bit like a toothpick end of that sauce. Yeah. And I was running for water, and unfortunately, the exhibition space didn't have water at all. Yeah. It was just crazy to have that experience at that point in time. Okay. Now this is the part of the drink. This needs to be mixed. So what I do is I just take a spoon and just mix it. Gets a little messy. Don't worry. Actually, you could add a little bit of salt as well, so you can just take a little pinch of salt from here itself. Uh, because it's just pure tomato juice, it's got no flavor to it as such, apart from the tomatoes. You know, once you put the good jaloka, I'm scared to have a drink now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not going to burn me up. The snack is going to be a tomato. <laughs> so, here you go. So, I'm going to slice up the tomato. So, with the seeds and all. So, you don't need to worry about. Uh, so, no cleaning? No, you don't have to worry about the cleaning part of it. Unless you're really particular that you want to remove the seeds, you can do that. Now what we're going to do, this is the very interesting part of it. Now to really make that heat count, we're going to spice it up with a little wasabi. Whoa, okay, that's, that's going to be good. Yeah, so... Um, so it's Japan and India coming together, is it? <laughs> There's a bit of India in this wasabi as well. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because actually, uh, you know, to get real pure wasabi, it's next to impossible. Have you had these incidents where people just swallow wasabi? Oh, I've done it. Oh, okay. times, yeah. <laughs> it just opens your skull out in your nostrils. <laughs> I like that high of wasabi as well. It's a fantastic high to get on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, you were saying something. No, I said, uh, so this is just uh, just a little bit of hit of the, the wasabi that you get there. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to string this up now. Uh, this is a good amount of wasabi. What you could also do alternatively, is, which I've not done actually, is that uh, you could add a little bit of ginger to it. You can, you know, cut, cut your ginger into... Uh, strips and actually just string it through this give it a good dip there you go and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this off there you go I'm going to make this stand there thank you well, Shreera, could I have you to try this out, please? Sure. I'm going to take a little bit of chili. Oh, yum. That's a really nice drink. It's your touch. It's like uh, more than just saying Indian, I think it's more. Gets you to the Andhra side of life. It's like really <laughs> spicy. <it's like saying, laughs> Reminds you of some Andhra style chili chicken. Yeah, right? yeah, it gets you there. <laughs> what you could probably also do is probably try, uh, try, try one of those tomatoes. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. That's very really nice. So here we go. So we have the hit of the wasabi is really really nice. So here we have the. Uh, Okay brethren, we've had the first drink. Now it's time for Sriram to show you how to make a cold brew Vietnamese coffee. Sriram, the stage is yours. Yes. So I hope uh, you guys understood how to make cold brew. I'll just repeat myself once. Uh, it's about taking a, a cup of coffee powder, putting four cups of water with it. So it's a ratio is always a one is to four ratio. So you get something like this, which is a cold brew concentrate. If you keep it for 12 to 14 hours in the fridge, and then you have a nice cold brew concentrate. So to make the Vietnamese cold coffee, 
you need condensed milk. That's one of the key ingredients in a Vietnamese cold coffee. So I'm using around anywhere between three to four spoons is the is the right amount for a nice Vietnamese cold coffee. I don't like it too sweet, so I kind of look at it at three spoons. So that's And yeah, I'll just tell you one thing. Uh, ah. You make coffee regularly with hot water. Correct. And this is cold brews, cold water. Yeah. So technically, in terms of aroma, in terms of taste, is there a difference or? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big difference and it's a lovely question, Sasha, because a lot of people don't know the difference between cold brew and hot coffees. Yeah. When you're doing a cold brew, what happens is the acidity of the coffee reduces drastically. Okay. But it may, maintains the sweetness because there's no heat process at all touching the coffee powder, right? Okay. Except when you're roasting. Okay. Other than that, there's no heat touching the coffee at all. Okay. So what it does is that the sweetness of the coffee is, is maintained and the acidity is much lower. So what, what it does, it allows you to enjoy coffee on the sweeter side a lot more. It, it just enhances. There's a lot more you can do in terms of summer drinks for a, with the cold brew. It's just phenomenal. And I okay. always have this full cold brew ready at home. So even when guests come, the kind of drinks you can make, it always gives you a plethora of options on what you can do. Yeah, sure. So on this drink, I've taken three spoons of uh, uh, condensed milk. I'm going to add a good 60 ml of my uh, cold brew concentrate. I think I'll do a little more. So we'll do 60 plus another 30. So 90 ml of cold brew concentrate because it's a tall glass. So then I'm just Shashi. Surprise. So a lot of people like to start sipping it first and uh, the sweetness keeps coming in as you go along. Um, so now I've given it a nice stir. The other thing to kind of add body to your drink would be to use a little bit of fresh cream in the drink. So it kind of makes it a little more thicker. Sorry. Whoa, a layer of fresh cream. Now that makes it nice right and fatty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, let's give it a nice look. And well, yeah. This is a Vietnamese cold coffee. Yeah, Shashi, all yours. Thank you. Let's give this a mix. Yeah. Wow, superb, really superb. First time I'm tasting coffee, something like this. I've never had cold brew ever in my life. I never had so much cream either. Ah. Amazing stuff. <laughs> Amazing you, stuff. Want, you want to add a drink to that? That'll also make it a nice drink. It'll be a, a spiked Vietnamese cold coffee. And I'll tell you, the best thing that will go with this is either you take a cognac or you take a rum. Yeah. These, these are probably the best two combos that can go with this. What's your take on rum with coffee? Why do you like a rum and coffee? Just gives you that, you know, if you just actually smell rum by itself, you know, just like your cold brew coffee, that rum is it's a got a lot of, uh, a lot of sweetness to the rum that is there, as it stands, the sweet aroma that's there, sugar cane, you can smell that. There's Amy sugar in the coffee as it stands with the uh, condensed milk. And then when you have the rum, the actual, the nuttiness of this rum actually works well with the coffee. I'm sure. Really works. If you want to try it out, actually, why not? You can just probably try a 30 on this. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably try a 30 of this on this. And without much effort, it's actually floating. Okay, <laughs> it's got all the cream on it. <laughs> actually, you know, probably just try uh, mixing it around. With this, the, the fat is actually nice and settled there. Probably now, Shreena, we can probably take a sip out of this and try it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that is yum. That's truly yum. Yeah, so, so we've got a Vietnamese cold coffee and uh, thanks to Sashi we spiked that as well.
the things. So the Vietnamese is over. Where are you taking us next? Okay, uh, so I thought I'll just take you all guys down to God's own country. Ah. What's life with a little bit of coconut, man? So for this, it's actually, it's, it's, it's a traditional cocktail, it's called Sex on the Beach, but we said let's do it a la God's own country. For that, what we need is any white spirit, I have absolute with me here, vodka. And we replace the peach brandy with a coconut rum. You can have any coconut rum that you want. I've got Malibu with me, so I use this. The third ingredient that I need is actually a triple sec. I wonder where I left a bottle of triple sec. Ah, here, yeah, there you go. Triple sec. What else that we need? We need some fruit juices to go behind. They're fresh, not yet opened. What are the juices that you use? I'm using pineapple and I'm using lychee. Wow. Okay. Ideally, ideally, you could have used a cranberry to give you a little bit of tartness. Uh, but for the tartness, I'm going to use a lime. Oh, uh, so that, that gives you a good balance of the tartness and the mix of the drinks that you have. Mm. For this, we need a cocktail shaker. Or you could use anything that you can actually mix. So what we do is, uh, if you just go on with a little bit of ice in our cocktail shaker. the drink down so Correct. this ice is not going to go in the glass yeah. so uh, not to worry about that so here so I take a take a measure now again the amount of alcohol that you want is actually what the amount of alcohol that you think is good for you and you're good for it. so uh, to start off with what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 30 of uh, vodka the only reason is this is all that I've got left and May 3rd is a long way off Shashi I think you should make small on this one <laughs> So there you go, there's uh, <laughs> save, save, save up till the third. Yeah. So there you go, there's 30ml of uh, vodka. I don't know, probably can do a 60 of coconut. Probably get a lot of uh, flavor out of the coconut. So do this. You know, learn to make short plus cocktails. More I will be making one shorter, shorter cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> With water, now, yeah, alcohol, now the alcohol. triple sec, uh, what the triple sec does is uh, basically, triple sec is nothing but a it's a very citrusy kind of a, of a drink. Sweet, citrusy kind of an aroma. You can smell that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what we do here is uh, we don't add too much of this because it's got a strong flavor of citrus to it. So, we just take about a little less than 30 ml. So, you really don't need a full 30, just about say 20 ml of it. Down there. So, you get rid of this for now. What you're going to do is uh, going to use a little bit of pineapple juice. There you go. So pineapple and lychee, two things we yeah. have right? oh. <laughs> So it's truly God's own country drink. Absolutely yeah. God's own country. <laughs> Put it up there. Give it a good shake. It's the last thing you do. Just looking for the Looking for the difference that I actually had here. Probably can have. Yeah, probably can have it in this. So, you can see it's really cool. Yeah. You really don't need to add any more ice in your glass. And this will strain it out. There you go. I think a nice cut pineapple would have looked really nice in that one. Would have looked really nice, but uh, what I'll do is it'll probably give you a, a slice uh, of lime. Yeah. Slice of lime to go on the side. There you go. Well, there you have it. Uh, this sex in the beach in God's own country. Shira, go ahead, bro. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. Ah, oh, how I wish the lockdown ends fast so we can get out and try all these things. Okay, brother, now we have Sriram who's going to come out with a cold brew coffee with a watermelon infusion. So, Sriram, please take it ahead. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, this watermelon infusion is something that I would make on a summer day, light, sometime around 10 30 in the morning, and it's a drink that will continue with me till at least my lunch time. Because A, it's got no sugars put into it. Uh, if you want to add sugar, you can, but I think the watermelon's natural sugar is there in it. It's just a phenomenally beautiful summer drink. So let's dive deep and get to how to make the drink. So, yeah, as always, the ingredients, uh, the cold brew is the most important part of it. Uh, to get watermelon infusion done, one of the most important things is to put the watermelon in a, any kind of a, a jar that you can kind of just mix the watermelon very well. Uh, that's an important part while making the uh, coffee. Um, so let me start this by pouring a good Ninety ml, or in fact, I'll do a double shot for this because I like this. It's a nice big glass, so I do a, a double shot of coffee, and I'm going to request this mice to be put into it. Sure. So the beauty of coffee is that it, it absorbs the flavors that it, is, it mixes with, and uh, because I'm not going to stir it one more. Stir it too much or mix it too hard. Uh, the requirement is to just keep the watermelon and this mixed for around 15 minutes before you transfer it to a glass. So I'm going to put this. Yeah. Shira, do you want to shake it out or you just want to just. I don't want to shake it too much. Uh, probably just a slow till so that it all mixes well. Yeah, and just ideally the watermelon should be put first, and then the coffee, and then you can put the ice. Uh, I did the reverse, so I'm just going to kind of shake it around a little. And the key is to keep this for five minutes, and once uh, after five minutes, the infusion would have gotten nicely. The sweetness of the watermelon would have gotten to the coffee. And then it's just a fabulous drink, so we wait for five minutes. So Shira, your five minutes are done? Yes, it's sure. done and ready for a taste. Okay, so but before I empty the uh, infused drink back into the glass, I'm going to add a little bit of mint. It kind of really gives a fresh, fresh flavor into the so just a little bit fresh mint. Again, if you like it, you put it. Otherwise, you can. If you don't like the mint taste, you can avoid it. Okay, here we go. A yummy looking drink that you sip right through. And that's very that's, that's looking very interesting, Shri Ram. Yeah. Uh, after a long time, I'm seeing something else in a beer mug than. Go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID times, you can do this. <laughs> So this is your drink. Wanna try this? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm gonna just take a large. Uh, yeah, you should take a big cup. Wow, smells of watermelon and coffee together. Yeah, Amazing. It's not a sweeter drink, so yeah. it can go on. It's not something that you'll. As the infusion comes. Oh yeah. yeah. You can you can you can actually get the aroma of watermelon and the taste of it slightly in the coffee, and of course a strong taste of the coffee as well. Okay. It's really nice. Super. Done. There you go. So, the next drink, Shashi, I'm going to be making is again with a cold brew, a more simpler drink, which people can kind of have anytime during the day. Um, so, it's a very very straightforward drink. I'll show you some ice. Sure. So the cold brew can be had with two very basic things that you get. One is soda. I love the cold brew soda. Uh, and for people who like a, a little bit of sweetness to the drink, you can please go ahead and add a little bit of sugar syrup to kind of make it sweet. Um, so here. The other one that I enjoy a lot is a sorry. 60 of cold brew with let me dig into my yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. A good tonic water. Nowadays you get a lot of flavor tonic water as well, so that saves you the task of flavoring. But I like it. I like it simple. Okay. Shashi, go ahead. One more. There you go. Yeah. It seems to be a really, really simple thing. Yeah, it's an extremely simple drink. It's something that you can make. And tonic water is something that actually brings out the taste. Yeah. Super. This is super. This is a super drink. Absolutely no. fantastic. Yeah. Lovely on a sun on a Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. And if you want to spike it up, probably take a larger mug, fill half of this, and the rest half with beer. Go yeah. super. Absolutely super. So yeah, your table again. So this is all tonic and cold. So guys, there have been a whole lot of simple drinks that we've been making. Uh, so we're almost coming to the last bit. Yep. Are you ready for your next sure, one? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And this is going to be a really simple one. Uh, most of us usually have beer lying around in the house. And uh, probably on a Sunday afternoon or whenever you feel like you know having a drink, probably a hot day or whatever, you just open a can or a bottle of beer and you have it. Here I'm going to make something really fun out of the beer and something really sessionable as well. And uh, this is something that many know. And you probably call it a shandy. You make a shandy with a twist. You can probably use a different drink. But what I'm going to do is the real traditional one that we have here. So I'm going to use a, a lemonade to start with. And by and large, many people make that mistake of actually pouring the beer in first and having the lemonade later. But the actual way of doing it is actually to have your lemonade in first. Oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm and I've never depending, liked the shandy, so this will be the first uh, kind of thing that I've <laughs> And uh, depending on how strong you want your drink or how light you want to drink, you can just keep topping up the lemonade part of it. Okay. Or you can reduce the amount of lemonade that you have on it. Ah. And then come behind it with the bigger beer. Well, brother, it's going to be more beer or more lemonade. Which one would you choose? Whatever suits you. Whatever <laughs> suits you. So there you go. Now to just okay. bring a little twist to it. You squeeze Bye. in a little bit of lime. You squeeze in a little bit of lime. Uh, just, just to up the taste on it, just to up the taste on it, and just top it up with a beer. Yeah. So you get the get the lime to mix in it. There you go. So, Shreelam, would you like to have a taste? Sure. Simple, sh shandy. And it's the original shandy. Don't forget that bit. Hmm. Nice drink. Well, uh, brethren, if you did have some lime cordial, what you could do is you could substitute the uh, lemonade by pouring a full glass of beer or probably pour it halfway through, put in about a 30 ml or a 35 ml of lime cordial and then top it up with some more beer. Oh, is that and so what you call it, it's a, it's a lime and lager. Oh, okay. So that's again a very refreshing drink as well. So okay. I unfortunately wasn't able to lay my hands on any lime cordial, so I really couldn't show it. But the other twist to it is what I have here. I mean, this is alcohol free mixers. Uh, this is one of the brands you get, you get many other brands as well. This is what we call as a green apple. Okay. Right? So you have a shandy here. Okay. So what you do is you come behind it with, you don't need to measure it out, just eye it. It's a nice, it's, it's got a lot of sugar as well, it's, it's sweet. So you come up, come behind it with some little bit of green apple. Now you just see the difference. You don't even need to mix it, it, it just goes in there. Just I'm guessing the citrusy there. lime and the citrusy green apple is also going to kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm. I like this a lot better than the regular shandy. Yeah, so that, that's with the twist, that's with yeah. the twist. Now remember, now whatever mixers you have, this is a green apple, you can also chase it with a, with a triple sec or if you want some uh, little uh, more sweetness into it, you have put something called as a grenadine. Now these are alcohol free, uh, unfortunately this one is this one does have alcohol in it, uh, it's a triple sec with alcohol. This is grenadine, it's just got the, uh, the sweetness and the flavors to it, no alcohol in it. And uh, to come behind, let me just tell you, every 100 ml of it has added sugar of 85 and a half grams. So that's a lot of sugar. So you know you can actually cut down your sugars and use this. Do the last drink? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. 
That looks yummy, right? Yeah, I'm sure it's going to make many people drool on the volume of alcohol that's there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, the last one, brother, I'm sorry, the last drink that I'm going to be making is a coffee cream. It's a very simple drink. Uh, two basic ingredients. The first one obviously is the cold brew. And the next is again going back to cream and ice, obviously. So, here. To start with, I'm going to do a, a two portions of cold brew because I like this. I like my ice cream to be strong, so you can reduce it the way you want it. Uh, but I like it really strong, so I'm going to use two portions. Normally, a portion is what people use. Since we don't want to be wasting all that we're making, I made it for my taste. You need to also add a little bit of water just to cut the because the, what we're using as coffee is coffee concentrate, the cold brew concentrate. I just cut it with a little bit of water. And some cream. Ideally two spoons of cream is Good. Again, if you like a lot of body into the drink, please go ahead and add a little more cream because I've obviously added a lot more coffee because I like my coffee as they said. Strong. So, yeah. Some ice for you? That is nice. Yes, of course. A lot of ice, just not some. And don't forget, if you like to sweeten it, please go ahead and sweeten the drink. I don't like to sweeten it. The sweetness of the cream is good enough for me. <laughs> you go on, go on, go on. No, it's absolutely. Right. <laughs> I can see it, and I can see it. Right. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'm not going to trouble you there. Okay, that's. I mean, let's, let's try some ice cream. Yeah. This is real good stuff. Huh? You know what would really be better? Okay. If you actually got behind with some Irish whiskey? Yes. Yeah, and we are actually in. scraping the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. That's, that's what's left of it. That's the long dog special. <laughs> that's what's, I, I, who's going to eat it? Just gonna, I'm just going to pour in a shot of it. Yeah. There you go. And uh, what we're going to do is probably give it a nice mix. Oops. Sorry. No you should have. Go ahead, try it. Yum! That's very nice. 